In this tutorial, we're going to learn to build our first slide with Articulate Storyline. We're going to build a slide that actually looks a little like this. So we're going to insert some text. We're going to insert shapes with text in it. We'll insert a picture. We'll insert a character. We'll learn to do some formatting. And we'll also learn a few tips and tricks working with the timeline. When you first get started in Storyline, you're going to be in Story View. And Story View provides the big picture overview of your course. So as you start to add slides to your course, it'll show the flow and structure. In this case, we only have one slide, so there's really not a lot to see. Let's go ahead and double click on the sample slide. And now we're in an area where we're able to edit the slide and add some content. Before we add the content, let's go ahead and look at the Insert tab. So go up to Insert. And up, up here in this area is where you'll do all of the inserting of your content. So if you want to insert a picture, you can do that up here. If you can insert a shape, Storyline comes with character packs, so you can insert illustrated characters or photographic characters. You can insert video. You can record audio or insert pre-recorded audio. Over here you can insert your text. And then over here we have interactive objects. Now in this tutorial we won't focus on those, but we'll do that in a future tutorial. And then over here we have the preview option. And as you can see you have three ways to preview. You can preview a single slide. You can preview an entire scene or you can preview the entire project. Normally I just preview the slide because it's a little faster. But if I have slides that are interconnected, then I may want to preview the scene or the project. Let's go ahead and get started and create our first slide. So we're going to go to the Insert tab and select New Slide. And this opens up a few options for you. So you can insert a template, basic layouts, quiz questions, screen recordings. You can import PowerPoint, Storyline files, or other Articulate projects. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose a blank slide from the basic layouts. And now we have a slide where we can begin to add some content. So we're going to duplicate this slide or create this slide here. So the first thing we want to do is insert this background image, the city image. So go to your blank slide. Go up to Insert Picture. And then inside your Assets folder should be a picture titled City 43. Select that. And then you have your picture on the slide. Now at this point you can scale it, you can move it around. So you have a free form authoring environment and you can lay out the content the way you want to. We're just going to tuck this up in the corner. And then we'll scale it so it fits on the slide. So now we have our background. If we come back to the sample image, we notice that there's a darker color here that makes up our, makes up our slide background. So let's go ahead and format our background. To do that, just right click. And that opens up your format background. We're going to select that. And now we have some options. We're going to choose solid fill and then we're going to choose a color. Now what we're going to do for the color is we're actually going to come over here and pick a color from the picture. So we select color and you have this little eyedropper tool. So click on that. And now you can select a color from inside the picture. And we'll just take any color. It really doesn't matter. We'll hit close. And now we've got a color that comes from the picture. And this is a nice trick uh, if you want to create a, a kind of a cohesive look because you know the color is going to match something in the photo. So let's go ahead and look at what else we have. Here we have text. In this case, this is a text box. And this is actually a shape with text in it. So let's go ahead and add those. So we're going to come back to our photo. Go to Insert. And then choose Text Box. And I just have to click and drag it. And I'm going to type in Sales Training. Now you'll notice that Sales Training looks black. So we need to format that and that's OK. We select the text box. And you'll notice that I've got my format options for text. And I've got a lot of options. So it's a rich text editor. And I'm going to change my color to white. I can make it a little larger here. If I want to change the font, I can do that here. And then we'll just center this. And uh, we'll, we'll call that good. That looks pretty good to me. OK. If you ever want to nudge the objects on the screen, just use the arrow keys and that'll nudge them. So we'll just um, nudge that over. All right, so we've got our sales training text box. Now we're going to do this where we add these little tab-like shapes. So we're going to go to Insert, select Shape, and then we'll choose, choose a rectangle. 
Now go ahead and just draw it on the screen. At this point we don't need to worry about it being perfect because we'll format it and then we'll put it in the right spot. So the format it, the first thing we want to do is turn off the outline for the text box. So if you double click on the shape, that opens up your format toolbar. And then you can see you have shape outlines up here. We'll choose no or no outline. And now we want to fill it with a color. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a color pick and just pull a color from here that's a little bit lighter so there's some contrast. So go up to Shape Fill and there's your eyedropper. And we'll just find a color here. This looks good. And now we've got a color. And again, there's a little bit of contrast so that'll look really nice. So now that we have that formatted, let's go ahead and snap it into place. And you can see the little drawing guides as I move the object around. So that helps me get everything lined up. So this is lined up. Now what I need is I need five of these shapes. And there are a few ways you can duplicate objects in Storyline. One way is you can select the object and hit Control D. And that duplicates it. And then so we'd have an extra shape here as you can see. I'm going to delete that. An easier way is to select the object and then hit Control. And you'll notice how the cursor turns into a little plus sign. And then if you hit Shift, you can drag it down and keep it perfectly aligned. So I'm just going to drag one down. And now I'm going to copy these or select both of these. And then I'm going to drag these down. And then I'm going to select one more and drag that down. So now I've got them perfectly lined up. This actually looks pretty good. And then once you have your shapes here, you can start to align them. So in this case, I want to get these a little tighter so the gap in there is a little uh, less obvious. So to do that, I use the alignment tool. And what I need to do is focus on where do I want the top one's top to be and where do I want the bottom one's bottom to be. In this case, if I want to create them a little bit tighter, I just um, move the bottom one up a little bit. And then I can select these all. And then I'm going to go to the Arrange tab. And there's the Align tool here. And then there's Distribute Vertically. And what that's going to do is distribute them equally. And so now in this case, they're a little tighter. So that looks pretty good. I can take this and bring it down a little. So that looks good for this demo. And then the last thing we need to do for these is go ahead and just type in some text. So we've got these five tabs. I'm going to type in the first one and then I'll pause and type the rest of them. And so I just click inside the object and type in my text. And then just like the text box, if I want to format them, I can just select my box and then I can come over here and format the text. But this looks fine for this demo. So I'm going to pause it, fill in the rest of those, and we'll continue. All right, so I have all my text. Now let's look at what we have to do. We notice over here we have a character, so we need to insert a character. The other thing we notice is that the background image is actually a little bit muted. And the way we do that is we'll insert a shape on top of the image and then we'll make it a little bit transparent and fill it with a color and then that'll kind of mute the image and make it less uh, distracting for your content. So let's go ahead and do that first. We're going to go to Insert, select a shape, we'll choose a rectangle. And just like the tabs, let's format it first and then we'll put it in place. So what we need to do is get rid of the outline. So I'm going to go to Format. Choose Shape Outline, No Outline. And then I want to fill it with a color. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick this lighter color. So just go to Shape Fill. We'll do the Color Picker again. We'll just choose this lighter color. And now we need to make the shape somewhat transparent. So let's go ahead and do Format Shapes. There are two ways to access that. Uh, one way is you can right click and choose Format Shape down here. Or you can just select this little drop down box here. We select that and that opens the format shapes window. And now you can see there's a little transparency. And then you can slide that and get what you want. We're going to go with about, we'll go with about 40%. If you want to get it exact, you can type it in here or you can use these little arrows. So that looks pretty good for the demo. We'll just snap this in place. And again, these drawing guides really come in handy. And there we have it. The last thing we need to do is insert a character. So let's go to Insert. Choose your character. Now we can do Illustrate characters. 
And you can see Storyline comes with a number of illustrated characters and there's expressions and then we also have different poses. But because these are illustrated and we're using photos, a photo character probably looks better. So that's what we're going to select. We're going to select our photographic characters and then you can select any character that you have. I'm just going to select Christy here. Um, I'm going to choose the full torso and then I'm going to select a pose and you can see you've got a number of poses that you can choose. There's one here that's a little bit more neutral that I'll take from her and um, here it is. We'll just select this one and we'll insert it and now I can just move it on the screen. I'm going to scale it up and we'll call that good. So that's how to build some content in Storyline, add it to your slide. So we looked at adding text and shapes and doing some formatting and working with pictures and colors. And now that we're done with these, let's take a quick look at the timeline. So if you don't already have it open, just click on the arrow here and that'll open it up. And a few things to point out with the timeline is that the timeline represents the stacking order of the objects on the screen. Uh, the other thing is you can show or hide objects on the screen and then you can lock them. Now I'm going to show you a few different things that we can do with the timeline. So the, probably the most important thing with Storyline and the timeline is getting used to titling things because as we start to add interactive capabilities, titling things in the timeline is really going to speed things up. So for example, uh, this right here is our background image. So I'm just going to right click and I might call this my my background transparency, right? And then uh, this is a tab, so this might be tab 5, uh, just so I know what those things are. Uh, I'm not going to title them all. Uh, this right here is my background image, so that could be my background picture. And now you'll notice I got my background transparency and my background picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this and move these together. So these are both on the background. Now something that happens quite a bit when you're editing in Storyline is I may grab, want to grab the background, but when I grab this I end up grabbing the character by mistake or I end up grabbing the back. I want to grab the character, I want to grab the character and I end up grabbing the background by mistake and then everything shifts out of place. So to fix that what we're going to do is just select this lock feature here and now I can't accidentally grab the background. I can only grab the character. So those objects that I put on the screen that I don't want to move, uh, I just go ahead and lock those. And the same way if I want to edit something and, it, and there's an object on top, I can just hide it, do my editing, and then I can show it when I'm done. So get used to titling objects on the screen. Uh, use the locking and the hide features to, or show and hide features so that you can do some editing. And then one last thing I'll do, let me unlock these, is like when I have these background things together, I might select those both. So I hit the shift, oh, let me do this. Let me hide the character. And then I'm going to select both of these, which you can see here. Now if I hit Control G, that's going to group them. And so what that does is it compresses the timeline. And then anytime I want to access those, I can click on the arrow here and expand the group and then I can work on these individually or I can collapse it and then that makes the timeline a little smaller. It's a little easier to work with. We could do the same thing here with the tabs. Let's say I've got my tabs here. Um, I, you can see it's taking up five lines on my timeline. I hit Control G and now I've got a group of tabs and so I could call this my tabs. And now I've got fewer things to look at on my timeline. But if I want to work on my tabs, I can expand it and do some work on those. And so that really comes in handy. What we learned in this tutorial was how to uh, insert objects. We inserted text, pictures, shapes. We inserted characters. And then we also learned some formatting tips and tricks as well as working with the timeline. Now all you need to do is go out and practice and become a Storyline Pro.